Hello and welcome to Sydney International Airport and today I'm really excited because I'm checking out the new Singapore Airlines Suites product on board their Airbus A380s through to Singapore. Now from what I hear this is one of the best first class products in the sky. Um, the, the food is great, the service is great, has its separate seats and a bed uh, and I'm really looking forward to checking it out. In fact I haven't eaten for the last 12 hours because I want to fit in as much as possible. I didn't sleep either because I'm too excited so I'll have to make up for that on board as well. So why don't you join me and I'll show you how it goes. I'm Paul Stewart and I make videos about planes. This includes flight reports and reviews, tours around aircraft in museums and sometimes swallowing flies in front of planes. If you're into these types of videos then please check out my channel and subscribe. Here we are entering Terminal 1 which is the single international terminal at Sydney Airport. As so happens the Singapore Airlines check-in area was right in front of us so the walk was short. This was around three and a half hours before my flight, but I was still able to check in. While the dedicated check-in desk for the suites was empty, I was called over by another agent as soon as I arrived. And by the way, I'll show you through the lounge here in Sydney, but passengers traveling in suites also get arrivals lounge access in Sydney. Therefore, I'll show you through the special elite, the private room lounge later in the video. Then I was off through customs and security. The main entrance is near this large and illuminated SID text, but if you keep walking you'll find the special shorter queue for business and first class passengers. I'm not sure why this isn't promoted more by the airlines to be honest, because it's a massive perk on a busy day with very long queues. I was through in about 2 minutes and once again it's always great seeing the noise and bustle of airports returning after the last few years. The Qantas lounges are up those famous escalators, but the Star Alliance lounges are all down the other end of the airport, which is fine as their aircraft all seem to park there as well. Both Singapore Airlines and Air New Zealand have lounges up these escalators. When I look back down, it's nice to see renovations taking place as the terminal has been looking pretty tired in recent years. The New Zealand lounge is around to the right further, but Singapore's is straight ahead. The Silver Chris Lounge is open to their business class and status members, although straight ahead there is this discreet door and that's where we're going. It's only open to first class or suites passengers, therefore it's always going to be very quiet. It's reasonably long and thin with dividers separated into different areas, although the table or the seat service extends to the entire lounge. As always, I went for the seats with the view of the airport apron, although the view is fairly limited by this large roof just below the windows. There's these stylish and solid feeling chairs, and there's also these semi-private pods where you can get some work done. As you would have seen before, there are also tables and chairs where you can sit and eat, but again, the service covers the whole lounge as you will soon see. Now let's check out this buffet, which was very impressive for such a small number of passengers. The A380 only has six suites and the Boeing 777 only has four first class seats, so there's never going to be many other passengers there, even if you're there just before your flight. There's also a self-serve bar, and I believe that barista coffees are bought over from the other lounge by the staff. The staff bring around a wet towel and deliver the menus which you can see here in more detail. It was the early afternoon and I was up pretty early so I went for a cup of coffee, well sort of, and sat back and waited for the food. For the two appetizers I went with the duck pancakes and the chicken satay sticks, both of which tasted great. I ended up having another duck pancake because, well, why not? When my main arrived, the pan-seared barramundi, a glass of mum champagne was also brought around. I was pretty hungry but also conscious of not wanting to fill up before we got on board, especially when they would be serving a proper vintage champagne there, so I skipped dessert. Now there's also several showers available which you don't need to book, again because there's usually minimal passengers in here. As on board, there's a number of Lalique branded products for your cleanliness. 
There's also shaving blades, shaving cream, and inside those long white packets were toothbrushes and paste. Moving around to the shower, there are more products, but also a ceiling mounted rain shower head. I really like these as the water is spread over a larger area, so you're not having the pressure aimed directly at the top of your head, especially when you have as little natural protection as me. In the toilets, there's also the same amenities, and I thought I'd try to the facial mist, which went well. Overall, the lounge is great with prompt and personable service, and a pretty decent selection of food and beverages. The boarding process is really well organised and you're all taken across together Hello. as everyone else has almost completed their boarding. Thank you very much, enjoy your flight. As the business cabin was well and truly boarded, there wasn't really a queue for us so we went straight on. So business would have been to the right, but I was sent to the left, where the six suites are in a 1-1 one -one layout. Now the images never do them justice, but they really are very large, which I suppose is no surprise when you consider that each suite does take up half the width of the upper deck. The crew promptly introduced themselves and the crew champagne was poured. Let's go over this incredible suite in more detail. We enter via the doors which were locked open as we were preparing for takeoff. Inside, there is a blanket, socks and slippers. There's also room to hang your clothes, which is handy as I usually get straight into the PJs to keep your regular clothes as fresh as possible. And here's the TV, a 32 inch touchscreen, which does swing out as I'll show you shortly. This here is the mattress folded up, and this is one of the several lamps which you can control from central buttons or by pressing here. Moving down, there's a ledge and next to that are several ports, including USB and an universal power plug. Above that, and it's difficult to see, are buttons for the lighting and the seat. There's the Amanti kit, which I'll show you later, and here's the touchscreen for the in-flight entertainment controls. Now this tablet can be pulled out of the mount and moved towards you for easier use. Here's more storage spots, including this one with a mirror and lighting. And below that is a larger spot for bags. Here's a look back at the seat and in the left armrest are the controls for the in-flight entertainment, the seat itself and also the TV swiveling. And next to you is this ledge with the menu displayed. Under this is a large pull-out table which you'll see at the meal time. And here I was checking to see if the plant was real, and I don't think it was, but it looks great anyway. There's a reading lamp here, and taking a step back we get an overview of this wonderful seat. There's also another power plug hidden in here, and USB port. Uh, and another connection for the headphones in case you move the chair around and away from the other one. The suite really does feel well put together with high quality materials. You have this soft touch material here to keep your phone and wallet comfortable and the walls have this soft material over them and they probably slightly absorb some sound as well. And there's even this thick carpet that you don't really notice until you take your shoes off. The leather on the seat all felt really soft and every other surface you touch felt solid. The whole experience really is top notch. Here's the Bang & Olufsen noise cancelling headphones which work really well. In fact, they're probably some of the best headphones I've experienced in the sky. Now the A380 is a quiet aircraft so this makes the experience almost silent. They also came with these hygiene covers. There really is a huge amount of room and this was the takeoff and landing positions. Now let's check out this Amanta kit which I believe was gender neutral. It comes with soap, body wash, lip balm and a room spray. Now I must admit I haven't actually seen a room spray before in one of these. My second flight out of Singapore also came with a cologne and the flight attendant said that that's an ex Singapore thing only, although I'm not sure why and it's a bit of a pity you don't get it flying just from Sydney. As you'll see soon, there's more amenities in the bathrooms. Here's the slippers, socks and the eye mask again. Packing inside this handy carry bag were the PJs. They felt great and I'll be modelling them shortly, which is exciting. 
it was time to back out and we took off towards the south. The A380 is no longer that new, so I really shouldn't be that surprised anymore, but it really is a quiet and comfortable airliner. The spool up and rotation really is a seamless process that you barely notice unless you're looking out the window. I had been so busy filming that I hadn't used the headphones yet, so I plugged them in and then used the in arm buttons to move the TV screen out and angle it towards me. Now the seat has three preset configurations, TV, take off and landing, and then looking out the window, although you can position the seat between all those as well. If you're nine years old, then it really is quite fun. There was a round of drinks and I should point out that anything is available during the boarding process or now. Now with many airlines you're limited to water, juice or champagne, but in the Swedes you can have any drink that they have on board including a large selection of cocktails. And I didn't show you this earlier, but the window shades have two options of reducing the light or blocking it altogether. Now here's two bathrooms for the six passengers in suites, and the one on the right hand side is larger, in fact it's massive. There's heaps of amenities in different drawers. Turning around, there's something to sit on and work on your makeup, I'm assuming. And here on the other side is the actual toilet, although unfortunately there's no shower in here like the Emirates A380. There's this slightly more stylish water tap, and instead of drying your hands with paper towels, you get these cloth towels. And there would usually be a foot operated control for the bin door here, although this one was not operational, but I'll show you that when I show you the other toilet. And here's the PJs, which felt great, and the crew organised for my clothes to be hung up inside the wardrobe. Now an advantage of having the clothes in your own wardrobe next to your seat and not in a separate one in the galley is that when we start our descent I can get changed myself rather than having to disturb the crew to find my clothes as they're busy preparing the cabin. There was more crew and also a delivery of nuts. Now they were the best nuts I've had in the sky as not only were they warm but some of them had a sugary coating on them. Now it probably wasn't that healthy but it certainly tasted great. I was really looking forward to dinner and it began shortly after takeoff. First up there was a selection of bakery products and I always go with the garlic bread which almost always tastes great. First up was caviar with condiments and blinis. It was also served with vodka. Now other than this type of flying I'm really not especially cultured nor know anything about fine dining. I remember the first time I had caviar with Qatar Airlines and I took a big gulp from the clear liquid which I thought was water only to discover that it very much wasn't and I suspect it was flammable. Since then I've learned that caviar is served with straight vodka so I'm much more careful. It was also served with a pearl spoon as apparently according to the internet the metal utensils can change the taste. The second appetizer was the pancetta, porcini and farro soup with parmesan and parsley which also tasted nice. And then for the main, I booked the cook online several days before the flight, and it was the lobster thermidor, which was the best I've ever had, in part because it seemed to have a lot of flesh. The thermidor I had in the lounge later in the video had a lot less meat, as I'll show you. It was served with tasty veggies and rice, and there was a top-up of the crew. Another useful feature is that you can get out of your seat while the dinner table is still set. Now it's not something you think of until you're busting to visit the loo but can't because you can't pack everything up. Here the seat simply swivels around allowing me to go and check out the other loo which was smaller but still normal by first class plain toilet standards.
Now here's the foot operated bin door system that mostly works. And for dessert, I went with a triple chocolate tart with vanilla ice cream and raspberries. It was okay, but too sweet for me. And this was washed down with Graham's 20 year old tawny port. It's not a huge problem, but worth mentioning is that when the seat is in the TV mode, it doesn't actually directly angle towards it. Minor problem, but noticeable. And here's the doors by the way. They're fully manually operated unlike the Emirates doors which are electric, but that's fine as you don't have to listen to the electric motors every time they're open. I went to visit the loo and the crew asked if I would like to have the bed made. It has a reasonably thick mattress and great quality sheets and a doona. Everything feels nice to touch. It's an interesting design having a separate chair and bed and I'm not sure I fully appreciate it. So in normal first class, you usually get a very wide seat that converts into a very wide bed, similar to the old Singapore first class seats and Qantas ones. In this case, the bed is fairly narrow and it's fully flat, so you can't raise the head a little to watch the TV. You end up having to prop yourself up with pillows, which I found a little uncomfortable, so I actually got back into the lounge chair, which reclines fairly well. Now I appreciate there's bigger problems in the world, but I think I'd rather have a single and wider bed as I tend to bend my legs and contort myself to get comfortable when I'm sleeping anyway, so the extra width is always helpful. But the mattress did have its purpose here, to rest my long gangly legs. But when you are lying in the bed, the screen can be turned to directly face you with this button. The sun was setting and a fantastic light show was put on as we flew over the Australian outback and eventually across the coastline. The crew brought around a proper long black coffee, which tasted great. A few hours before landing, there was a refreshment served, and I went with a warm soy linseed sandwich with gum and ham and a menthol cheese with rocket leaves, cherry tomato, and gherkins, matched with a selection of fruit juices. The crew also brought around these little teddies, which were unique and make for great presents. And by the way, at no time were there any hot towels used, and instead we were given these antiseptic wipes. I wonder if this is a follow-up from the whole COVID precautions when non-essential human contact was reduced. I did notice that the crew all wore masks for the duration of the flight, although passengers were not expected to do so. Now there's no overhead storage bins, which wasn't a huge problem as there was plenty of room in the suites themselves. In-flight Wi-Fi was available and free of charge for passengers traveling in the suites. And speaking of, please check out my Instagram account where you find many more aviation related content and updates from my aviation and space adventures. We started our descent down into Singapore and I'll include the landing footage followed by a visit to the refurbished flagship, the private room lounge and the menus. So how was a flight? It was really, really good. One of the best I've ever had. I just wish it was longer than the seven and a half hours so that I could have enjoyed the experience more. The Airbus A380 is a brilliant aircraft and while it doesn't have the emotional connection of the 747 for example, it's so quiet and comfortable. The suite itself is pretty amazing and hugely spacious. It was well put together and incredibly comfortable. I mentioned a few nitpicking details but really it was an amazing place to be. The crew really were top notch as well. A common comment about some Asian airlines is that the crew can be good, but also robotic, but these guys were very warm and engaging, as well as very prompt and efficient. I could see them subtly peeking through the artistic holes in the doors to ensure that the glass was full and the unused plates were taken away. Nothing was a burden for them and they made the whole experience just that little bit more special, as you would expect flying in first class. I'm not a massive foodie, but to me the food and drinks were fantastic. The lobster especially was a highlight as I've often found it very work intensive, mining the meat out of the shell, and often the meat itself was lacking, but this was literally piled up with lobstery goodness. I'll show you what I mean when we get to the lounge soon and the lobster there was far less meaty. 
Now there weren't any overhead air vents, which was a pity as I always liked to have a steady flow of air over my head. But the cabin was kept on the cooler side, which is my preference as you can always wrap yourself up in a blanket. It's easier to get warm than lose heat if the cabin is already too hot. There was a decent selection of movies and TV shows and a great in-flight map to watch on the high quality screen. Overall, it was an incredible experience and I felt so fortunate to have been able to test it out. At Terminal 3, there's two separate first class lounges, one being called the first class lounge, which is open to first class passengers obviously, and also frequent flights with high levels of airline status. And by the way, there is this incredible and massive TV screen, which if you look closely, you'll notice that the artwork is all moving. Now distractions aside, the real place to head is the private room, which is only open to passengers traveling in Singapore's airlines, own first class and suites, and that's it. It can't be accessed through any airline status alone or even first class with other airlines. And you head down this golden corridor. Inside, it's all old school class, although difficult to film as it was around 10 p.m. and the lights were lowered a little. There's plenty of seating spots at either the tables or just comfortable leather chairs. There was a full a la carte menu and table service throughout the lounge just like in Sydney. The service was really good and I noticed the staff constantly patrolling, ready to make eye contact and take requests. First up, I had some more dinner, starting with a lobster bisque, followed by a classic lobster thermidor. It tasted great, but there was a lot less actual meat than the thermidor I had on the flight. Again, for comparison's sake, here's the in-flight offering. And for dessert, I went with the oven baked apple crumble with vanilla ice cream, which tasted fantastic, and this was all washed down with sparkling water and a vintage champagne. In fact, there was a fridge full of the Tattinger on display, amongst other drinks, making for a pretty valuable fridge I would have thought. As I had an onward connection in a few hours, I was keen to have a shower and check out the shower suites. You don't need to book these in advance and you can just turn up. As you'd expect, they're fully stocked with amenities and look great. Again, there's also a roof mounted rain shower head, which I always love. There's also private rooms which you can use although you can't book them ahead and there's a two hour limit so it's worth checking if these are available as soon as you arrive. They come with storage space, a desk and chair and a mattress. Unlike the rooms in the Concord Lounge at Heathrow, if they're still there, food and drink is not allowed in here. The mattress is electrically adjustable and also has a vibrating massage function. It was incredibly quiet in here and the entire wall was lined with this soft touch and noise absorbing material. There was also a playroom for the kids. Overall it was a great place to sit and wait for the onward flight or grab a quick meal after your flight arrives just before you head into Singapore. Now that brings to an end this wonderful experience. If you enjoyed the video please give it a thumbs up and thanks for watching. Here's the menus from the flight and the lounge.